What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Funcast, episode 31. And we've got a pretty great guy on today, um, Jasper De Hanars from Fungi Academy. Fantastic. Uh, thanks so okay. much for coming on the cast, man. I really appreciate you. Thanks, Jason. And like, I, I, I honestly think that was the best pronunciation of my last name that anybody ever did on a podcast. So, good job. Wow, dude. Uh, that's like, I, I'm honored. I'm honored. Uh, <laughs> you know, you gotta try. Uh, so, I mean, what's going on, man? I know we've been uh, trying to get together a little bit but it's mm -hmm. hard with you know being adults and having schedules um, <laughs> exactly so. yeah but so it it's pretty good we're at the end of our uh course season so we generally do courses from october <laughs> until march and so the last uh, couple of weeks have been for me like closing our stuff up here i'm gonna be i'm preparing to travel to the united states i'm gonna be at the santa cruz mountain mushroom festival in about two weeks, I think it starts. And yeah, just enjoying the sunshine here in Guatemala, spend time with the community, uh, with all the little babies that are being born around here, left and right. And uh, yeah, like uh, getting stoked to get out of here and do some, some travels. Yeah, man, I mean, I could imagine. I feel like being anywhere too long, it gets, uh, for me, you know, sometimes you gotta, gotta move. Um, that's cool. You said you're going to the Fungi Festival. Is that just, are you just going to have fun or is it like a teaching thing? Yeah, I'm speaking uh, and I'm be, I'll be hosting some panels at the, it's the Santa Cruz Mountain Mushroom Festival. And I had to call it like that because there's already a Santa Cruz Mushroom Festival. So oh, But it's, uh, it's run Mountain. by the people from Far West Fungi, like Kyle and Aaron and like that whole fam. Oh, okay, okay. That's cool. I've only gotten to like really speak to them briefly throughout the years of just doing business with uh, Fung Straight. Oh, but, okay, cool. Um, they're they're great people. They they I love their uh, their fruiting blocks. Oh, for sure. They are like I, like I, I'm always impressed when I see that mountain that they have outside of their farm. That just is like all these blocks that you can just climb, and there's still mushrooms growing from these blocks. It's uh, it's very impressive. So who needs rock climbing when you can climb <laughs> mushroom fruiting blocks? That's the next level, you know, you just do like mushroom. Like, you can have belayed, you can have like mushroom bouldering, you can have... I'm saying, and then you just have like, you know, if and you could like carry a chalk bag on one shoulder and like a little grill on the other, just like throw it in front of you, like Coleman. There you, you go. You know, cook up some mushrooms while you're... Uh... <laughs> Who says you need chalk? You just get the spores from the mushrooms, and they they kind of act like the same thing. There you go. Pretty they dry much. you out. All right, guys, you heard it first on Funcast. That's <laughs> you know we. All right, Jasper, we're gonna see we're gonna see like mushroom spore climbing chalk in the Amazon in the next few months. Oh, for sure, for sure, hundred percent. And you can claim it's uh, it will in increase your grip strength if you use reishi spores. Oh, it's like oh, it the, the, the ganoderic acids will just infuse in your hands and you're you'll be like you'll become the you will become the wall exactly <laughs> <laughs> i mean on rock climbing i guess you know it sounds like you know a little bit about it are you an avid rock climber uh i like doing it but i uh, i suck like it's one of those things that i uh, uh there's a you my friend to here I in Rural, like what, yeah, yeah yeah well like my friend here built a bouldering gym uh, in rural Guatemala and that's super nice and um, I go twice a week and every time somebody new shows up and they're already doing these routes that I've been trying for like weeks I'm like okay this is not my <laughs> the thing I'm naturally good at but I enjoy enjoy doing it me too man I, I think like that's kind of like the beauty of that um, sport right I think like so many different human beings where we all have different dimensions so like you know, problems that may be easy for one person, you know, another person will, you know, won't be able to do it and vice versa. Uh, so it's not even necessarily about being good per se, but, you know, it could just be the route that you're climbing. Exactly. <laughs> and like nobody cares. That's the good thing about rock climbing or bouldering as well. Nobody cares except for yourself. Right. So that's the. Yeah. 
but that's you know, the thing. Like really, like as as I get older, I feel like that saying um, just you know it feels more and more. It's not. It's just in any aspect for the most part. As long as you're hanging around mature adults, nobody gives a shit. You know, no. we're just here to have a good time. That's it. That's it. Like uh, I think that like a quote came by the other day that I enjoy is uh, like. You stop caring about like what people, other people think of you when you realize how little they think of you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like a, that's one of those things where I feel we uh, you get like hyper fixated on this one thing. You're like, oh, this person doesn't like my freckle, and it's like, you know, it's like in the general scheme of things, it's so minuscule mm. in comparison to what's actually going on. It's like. Humans are weird, man. We're weird. Brains are weird. Fucking everything about humans is weird, not just our brains. But I, I think that's why it's good, sure. right? Like we, uh, I think if not weird, being not weird is kind of boring. So I, I prefer to hang out with weirdos. <laughs> I agree. I think you know, it's like I feel like weird is just the norm. You know, I feel like normal people are actually the weird ones because. We've all got things going on. We're all unique individuals. So it's like if you're like a freaking robot, it's like, well, you know, that's kind of off at that point. Yeah, 100%. Um, I mean, so like, I feel like this has probably been asked like a billion times of you, but like what got you in, into mycology? Yeah. Well, uh, so I'm from the Netherlands originally, right? So I, uh, my first experiences with like mushrooms were... Well, obviously, like the forest and like eating like button mushrooms, but my friend uh, bought some truffles in a store. Some of these, like they're like a sclerotia of either Salasbi mexicana, Salasbi tampanensis, Salasbi atlantis. Yeah. I think Salasbi cubensis can also sclerotize, but it's it's a little bit more challenging. So these are the three main ones, and he uh, he gave them like a little bit to me. I think right now I would call it a mini dose, maybe like comparable to like half a gram of dried cubensis. And I had a really good time. I was struggling with depression in most of my teenage years. And I, I, I felt there was some like spark there. And I was young and explorative in all the senses and especially with substances and like my, uh, my state of uh, reality. And uh, not long after I decided to just buy a whole container and like just eat it all and like have this amazing uh, experience by myself. And everybody, like, maybe if somebody listened to a podcast with me before, I'll tell the story of, like, that I was watching The Lion King, and, like, because that's what I read on Arrowhead, that's a good thing to do or something. And then, like, I got into the movie, and I became Simba, and, like, duh, duh, duh. spent too much time yeah. with Timon and Pumbaa in the jungle. Uh, and I then I was really into, like, these truffles, and uh, I was sharing them with my friends, and, like, I was just, like, buying them for my friends, and they were, like, still not super cheap. So I was, like... 15 euros like 18 bucks for like an experience and i uh i ran into a friend and i went like uh uh i went to a friend's house and my friend had like one of these grow kits that you can buy uh just basically it's grain spawn that's fully myceliated and you just rip it open and like mm -hmm. make sure it gets like enough moisture and then you get some cubes growing straight from the grain spawn and uh, i was like whoa that's that looks amazing and then I was kind of calculating. Oh, it's like a lot cheaper as well. So that's how I started buying those. And then I started finding out that I was buying grain spawn. I was like, oh, fuck, I'm buying grain spawn. Might as well buy some coconut corn, grow more mushrooms for the same uh, grain spawn I was buying. So that's kind of where like it ended up. And I ended up on the shroomery and Mycotopia and then kind of was hooked. Look at you now, dude. Look at you now, sipping on a fancy cup on a podcast, baby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a mate gourd. My friend just came back from Argentina and he gave me this really nice actual Argentinian mate gourd. So I like sipping on some, some tea. I like it, man. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the tropical vibes. I, it's cool that um, truffles kind of started it for you because it was a similar, similar, you know, thing for me, for sure. The tampanins is uh, one of my favorite, you know what I mean? And uh, I think like, uh, the guy uh, when I heard about them and I heard about how Amsterdam it's kind of like the that's the, the 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 way around it because they're not considered fruiting bodies but they yeah. still have 
content of you know the same alkaloids uh yeah, so the alkaloids like, in the Netherlands are not like... Uh, so Amsterdam is just the capital of the country, right? The, the Netherlands, so I'm from the other side of the country. Um, but um, the alkaloids were never illegalized. Actually, up until 2008, you could still buy the fresh mushrooms. But this underage French girl, like, uh, like uh, unfortunately, they killed herself... Uh, after consuming some of these mushrooms, but then like later found out like that she already was like suicidal and she had alcohol in her system and cocaine and, and DMA and she was like somebody else bought them from her and the whole committee yeah. was basically saying like hey this is a freak accident like I know like we know that this is, feels hurtful but like we don't think it's wise to make these mushrooms illegal and then th we had a pretty conservative government at that ma uh, time and they did make them illegal but they only wrote like the up like the fruiting body in the law so that was the loophole that like people figured out you could still grow and sell the sclerotia and now even where people were selling like mycelium uh like liquid mycelium that was bred to be like super high in psilocybin and psilocin so you could drink this like tiny vial really? of liquid mycelium and it would give you an experience golly gee like a freaking little liquid culture dude yeah exactly i so i like looked up the truffles um and it seems like you know there's like different Collins, like the what like Holland, Holland something. They're all um, bullshit. They're all like. I was wondering, is that bullshit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, I was like, you know, I know of Tampaninsis, I know of Galindoy and Jalisco, or like yeah. Mexicana. Exactly, and um, so the issue being that like uh. Like it's when stuff is sold in a store, and you see this in the United States as well now with the strain debate. And maybe we can talk a little bit about that, right? Because I'm I'm on the sides of cubes a cube, and maybe albinos are generally stronger. But all this stuff of like, oh, hillbilly is good for microdosing, and this is good for this experience. I think that's all marketing. And I like I, the reason I'm telling myself that story is because I used to go to the stores, and I, I was looking for these truffles and then you see these super colorful boxes of stuff that says dragon's dynamite five star psychedelic four star philosophical three star visual and i'm like what does this even mean right That's what is what it i was wondering so yeah you have the hola like uh, the holanda you have the mexicana uh, which i think is just philosophy mexicana uh, and then you have the dragon dynamite was a big one i i have not looked at them for a while but um yeah it's a uh, I'm, uh, I'm seeing that trend kind of go towards that in the United States. I think we just like stories, right? And marketing is stories. So, like, I feel that if somebody gives us something that, like, can change our consciousness to such a level that we kind of agree upon that, right? If, you, if, some, if you've never had a certain strain and, like, uh, let's, let's say tidal wave right now, and somebody's like, yo, these are the most visual mushrooms you've ever had, that, that's going to stick in your mind. And that's probably, like, how your brain is going to get wired. So... I, I think uh, there's definitely a lot of phenotypical difference, but they also just released a study. I don't know if you saw that, like uh, in t uh, December 2023, that they showed there's actually less genetic diversity between the cultivated varieties of Slavic cubensis than the um, the wild varieties. So there's actually I feel like that's 100 percent because we're kind of bottlenecking it. Sorry to interrupt you on that. No, no, all good, all good. Uh, I feel like you know as we do all of this, um, you know, genetic work. I feel like I uh, actually we just talked about this, you know, I think a couple of days ago with, you know, the genetic work, we're able to uh, isolate, you know, certain, I guess, you know, morphologies and things that may not grow naturally. Right. Like I feel like maybe albinos and leucistic varieties in nature are probably few and far between because it's just like in nature, the dominant succeeds. Uh, so like through that and then, you know, all of that, like, I feel, you know, we're just kind of like messing it up a bit. Yeah. So especially with the albinos, right? Because like the, like the reason why much like Cubensis at least has its color is because the same reason why our skin has color is melanin, right? And the reason yeah. why we have melanin and mushrooms have melanin is to protect from the sun. So Psilocybe Cubensis grows in pantropical conditions, uh, generally from like animal dung right so there's not generally not so much shade in these areas that like yeah. those the, the the cattle let's use that as an example is grazing so they need to have some form of protection but also if you look at how slow most uh, albinos grow even in like sterile conditions and all that stuff like they would just get out competed in the wilds that's just the reality 
and I'm not even talking about enigmas, which would never grow in the wild. So I, no way. so I, I personally, a big fan of like, this is how it started, right? Like when I talk to like uh, an older cousin or like some uh, friends in the Netherlands that would like still remember it when mushrooms, uh, Cabanza's mushrooms were sold whole in the Netherlands. It was the only names you had was like Mexican, Colombian, and just like the origin, right? It's Costa Rica, these kind yeah. of things, Thai, um, and I, I think that's a nicer way to like have the strain debate go towards because I think that like there's going to be a lot of genetic diversity. And also, I think, you know, it's like, do you want to eat a chicken that is uh, like grown in a factory farm or do you want to eat a chicken that is Not like what, basically, right? Basically. So I, I think it's like more interesting to have and work with organisms and genetics that are uh just generally more adapted to wild eco like wild ecosystem land, therefore you know, i think stronger like closer to the land race. i agree man yeah so especially looking at like enigma as an example right like to me that's like eating a chicken with like five heads and like <laughs> eyeballs coming out like why would you want to have like an consume an organism like that just because it's stronger uh in specific... i would have even and then you know i would I, I would beg, you know, argue that it's necessarily stronger. But Enigma is one of the most pains in the ass varieties ever. You know? How long does it take the fruit? Like three months? I fruit yeah, it once. Two, three months. Yeah, yeah. It's like. If and it doesn't yeah. contaminate in that time. And yeah. then it's like, you know what I mean? Novelty. It, novelty. It's like cool. Like if you're getting liquid cultures and you get like the bioluminescence cultures, it's like, you know, for a novelty, just to grow, just to try it out. Go right ahead, but hundred percent, you'll never see that growing on a tree. No, no. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm like a big favor of like, okay, let's rewild also our, our cultures, and also shout out uh, Drew from Inoculate the West, and I know also Michael Cowboy goes out and like finds new, new genetics in the wild, right? And we we're working with some Guatemalan genetics as well here. Um, just to preserve them but also it's just fun you know it's like what well, this grows here naturally like just give it like that that that's straight out of peter mccoy's book right um just work with the the mushrooms that you find in your ecosystem because they're already going to be adapted to the the varieties of trichoderma let's use that as an example uh in your natural ecosystem so they're going to be more resilient right and like i think for us as humans to become more resilient we should also choose to like work with organisms and consume organisms that are more resilient instead of less resilient. I agree, man. I think uh, I think his friend uh, Silo Vibe. He, uh, he, I think he's out from Arkansas. He's always working from uh, you know spores and, and cultures that he finds out in the wild. Um, I think yeah, I like to like. I kind of been preaching this, and it's a little funny. I kind of created a little joke that ruffled some feathers, but. I made the anti penis envy club. Yeah, I'm part of that club, bro. I'm part of that yeah. club. Why would you want to consume something like that? Is even called? It has the word penis in his name. Like to me, that's just so. That's just funny because it's strong. It's like I think we all like. There's this whole matriarch. Uh, matriation movement right like out of the patriarchy into more of a matriarchy or finding a yeah. fusion it's like so why do we kind of uphold this phallic symbol of the penis envy as as the holy grail of these these quote-unquote yeah, healing just, mushrooms you know, yeah I, that's a good question man and you know with with that being said like it's not even necessarily that enjoyable per se right you know i think i think it's a very like it's a very tough lesson you know, it's a, it's a it's a tough teacher, so to speak. Whereas, like, there are many other varieties that are um, way more kinder to the soul. It will teach the same exact lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I I also like to reframe this idea that like stronger is better. Personally, I do not enjoy uh, dabs so much. Maybe what like a tiny like sip from through a straw of like the the like the weakest stuff. But also the same with. I don't enjoy like uh, if I decide to drink alcohol, I drink like maybe a drink a week on Fridays because my neighbors here, they make really nice uh, uh, home ferments, right? Like meats and stuff like this. So I have a, a nice meat, but like I prefer that way over 
any vodka or whiskey or like mezcal. Mezcal's all right sometimes, but like I, I personally don't think that stronger is better for most substances anymore. I used to think like that when I was 18 or 17 that like just get me fucked up, but. You know, I'm in my 30s now, so... Yeah, dude, you know, I think it's not all about the potency. Um, and I think a good a good thing, a good reference point to that is, that you know, marijuana, right? Uh, some THC levels aren't necessarily going to be crazy high. However, it's still, you know, going to help you out um, in whatever way, I guess, it's helping you out for whoever it's helping out. And I get... Now that we're on flavors, dude, uh, it usually ask a super important question. Uh, it's very, you know, personal, close to heart. Uh, if you don't want to answer, it's okay. But I was wondering what your favorite flavor of ice cream is. Oh, my God. That's a hard question, man. It's so vulnerable I have to be for this. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I hate you I'm, with it. I'm like... Uh, right now it's so hard because it, 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 I think that the only question, the answer that makes sense is it depends. Uh, we have, we are blessed here in like, rural, like this town that I live in in rural Guatemala. We also have like uh, somebody that makes homemade ice cream and it's phenomenal. And there is, okay. So this is an answer that you're never going to get anywhere else. So this is fruit here. Uh, it's called Okote and it's like, it's, uh, it, it goes green and turns really bright red and this pit is massive. You don't really see it out of uh, Central America. And the, the local mines, they, they love it. But it's really quite hard to eat because the, like, you'd just be eating like the tiniest layer of fruit with uh, skin and then this massive seed. So you just kind of have to suck on it. But this lady, when it's the season, she makes okote ice cream. Uh, and it's like tarty and fruity and it's kind of like mango but it has a little bit more depth and it's a little less sweet and so I think when is the season that's the one that came up right for me right now so we'll just go with that one and I know I'm unique in that I know that nobody else will have had that answer so not even close (laughs) absolutely the most unique ice cream story uh, to date cool Uh, cool I mean that's so cool, man, that you live out, uh, like, out there, dude. Uh, I mean, like, what's a, I mean, experiencing different cultures and stuff, um, how, is it different from, you know, I guess, where you're originally from, you said Denmark, right? The Netherlands, the Netherlands. Or Netherlands, dude, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. You're excused. You, you went through the American schooling system, you can't help it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just naturally a doofus. No, no, all good. All good. I'm not offended by it at all. Uh, and I also no offense to all the people that like seem to be protective about the American su- schooling system. I'm just joking around. Yeah, um, yeah it's, all, it's all fun and games here. You know, we're just having fun. We're chit-chatting. We exactly. <laughs> That's okay. We're still so, going to keep going. I think it's, it's almost the exact opposite where I'm from and here. Um, so the Netherlands is very structured, uh, very organized. All the roads are good. Uh, you have to pay like taxes for farting around and like all that stuff. And here, I think what draws me here is more free, but like, I think uh, people always ask me like, what made, what made you decide to come to Guatemala? And I was, for me, it was never a decision. I was actually like, I traveled around the world for most of my early twenties, like, uh, I saved up like literally like 4,000 euros when I was 21 and then I was gone for like three years and lived in Southeast Asia and Australia and like lots of these places and I really That's enjoyed so cool. doing like very like bare bones traveling and I was actually trying to get from Seattle to the Amazon without paying for public transport or uh, flying or any of that and I didn't really have like the uh, Guatemala even on. I had to just pass through it, but I heard of this lake through some other traveler stories. And then when I was in Oaxaca, I heard of the Fungi Academy, which already existed at that time. And I was like, that seems great. I know how to grow mushrooms. I, I want to live more in community and I want to learn more because I, I did a lot of fruiting, but I didn't do so much of the lab work up until that point. And then I got here and then like just life happened. And then I somehow started teaching the things that I knew and then like that grew and then I felt that I wasn't like I was doing this for free at first or on donation and then I was like holy shit I don't know shit so then I was like learning a lot uh, because I didn't want to I just wanted to learn more and then yeah it just kind of happened and like Oliver the founder 
just kind of took like took rest me under his wing. Peace. Yeah, rest in peace, man, and uh, rest in power. And uh, I learned so much from him. And I was just like thinking that this is going to be a, a chapter of me learning and uh, like growing with this amazing, amazing teacher in my life. And then when he passed at the end of 2020, that was like, okay, so is Fungi Ken just going to pass away or do we, the rest of the team step up and carry on his legacy and his mission and um, that, and we're still here like uh, more than three years later now. So uh, like uh, if, moving if, and grooving, dude. Moving and grooving. So it, it, it kind of happened. I, I like to say it's like, I don't make decisions anymore. Like the mushrooms tell me what to do and I'll just be like, okay, this is what I'm doing right now. Sure. <laughs> I hear that, dude. That's, that's what I, you know, how I feel about even my business. Uh, everybody's like, how'd you start your business? And I try to tell people, I'm like, I didn't start my business. This community started this business for me, uh, you know, and they just allowed me to provide them with uh, something that they need to use, you know? Um, I mean, how long have you been with the Fungi Academy now at this point? Uh, I joined at the beginning of 2019. So over five years now, five years and three months, something like this. What a legend, dude countless people you've taught you know how to how to feed themselves how to feed their mind you know i think uh -huh. you know and just even just be around you know freaking mushrooms right i think there's so much more than just edible and you know it doesn't even necessarily have to be edible um, no it's 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 like understanding the ecosystem right and it's like just like being in awe of the what is around us right like I, I'm personally so stoked every time I see a lichen. I hardly eat them or make medicine, but it just to me, it's crazy that there's this cosmos on this tree that, that ha like houses so like probably like tens of thousands of microorganisms that can completely survive on its own without this tree or without like the atmosphere being in the same level. Uh, like they can survive in space. And that to me is just like blows my mind and this is inspiring and just sharing that the like, I'm just excited about it, right? And like, if I'm just lucky enough yes, to have found something that people, yeah. thanks, man. Right now. But I'm just stoked that people like that I found something in life that I can be excited about things, and that people like want to come and listen and and learn it, like and share my excitement, right? And and with that as well, like people always come for the the mushrooms, but then they they realize that the the community aspect, right? And like like living together and like holding each other accountable is a big one, man. Like I'm a big proponent of, uh, of uh, that kind of lifestyle, but also I, I go to a man's circle every week and uh, we keep each other accountable with like our goals and like when we falter and we, we're not into uh, in, in integrity with ourselves. So I really think that like we are pack animals, right? And our culture has pushed us to be these individualistic beings, but in reality, that's, that's not our nature. And like, I think we can get so much more done for one, but I think we can also uh, grow so much faster if, if we have a, a solid support network. And I think that's really what people come to find out when they either come for a course here at Fungi Academy or come like live as a resident for a while. And uh, yeah, that was a cute thing. We had like somebody that stayed there for a couple of months leave and they, they, everybody was like, you're a lifer. It's like that people within two months of knowing each other can call each other like, oh, you're like your friend or family member for life. That to me is like really touches me. And that's beautiful. You know, I mean, really making connections and uh, it's like that's what it's about at the end of the day. It, you know, all this other stuff comes and goes, whatever it may be. However, the connections are there forever. The memories, you know, those are there forever. Um, and uh, we, you know, that's that's what that's what we gotta look for, man. I mean, you know, outside of like mushrooms, what do you like to do? Well, that's a uh, that's uh, for the last five years, mushrooms and learning and teaching and growing have uh, taken up a lot a lot of uh, my time. But I uh, I I enjoy to do a lot of traveling. I'm actually excited. Like I um. So I'm from the Netherlands and I, I, I did his bike tour. I cycled from the Netherlands to Portugal, which is about like 2000 something miles uh, in 2016, something like this. And uh, that was really powerful and I really enjoyed that. And now I'm actually with some friends. We're going to go to Japan uh, in a, uh, after my US trip and then we're going to go and cycle around Japan. So that's that's something I'm really uh, excited about. Uh, it's more traveling by that's bike. Cool. 
and just like that slow pace and then still like knowing that like with just my physical like body i was able to move myself from this point all the way over there that's something i enjoy doing um you know i'm also uh i i, I read like a lot from like fiction to non-fiction and all like mushroom related like philosophy or um just like how to like communication stuff uh but also who are some of your favorite authors Ooh, favorite author so i like a really good book that i always recommend to anybody is the 15 commitments of conscious leadership consciousness leadership by diana rothman i think is her name there's like three authors but she's the she is like kind of a wizard on that um I, i'm really into sci-fi so uh asimov is, is great so of course with the dune hype frank herbert i really loved reading dune uh recently uh there's a series called the sun eater that i got sucked into that was really good it kind of has dune vibes so if you're into dune uh yeah have that... you seen dune 2 yet oh yeah we are able to because there's no cinemas here but i was able to pirate it of the internet and we did a screening here we have a pretty nice projector so uh we had like 20 people that from the community that came and we had like the big we got the biggest speakers and like yeah, it was great. It was so good. That's awesome, man. That was a good movie. I, that was a good I'm movie. I'm going to talk about it because I know there's going to be someone who watches this and be like, oh, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, we're going to have to spoil, but uh, yeah. yeah, I, I kind of wanted to spoil, but no. Uh, that was right, just no, my, my rebel. No, I'm <laughs> joking. I'm just joking. I just wanted to do it because my rebel self, right? Sometimes I feel like I just want to be a, uh, that, that when it came out. But like, um, explodes. Just kidding. Yeah. I also uh, I also like to play board games. Uh, I play a lot of chess, and uh, there's a Dune board game that's really good that the, that we're hooked into with the community right now. Uh, it's called Dune Imperium. It's fucking good. Um, so yeah, sauna like exercise. We have a cold plunge now here. Uh, I play guitar. Dune also the yeah, classic hippie trees. shit. Yeah. I've uh, you know I like how like. You a lot of what you do is really, you know, community based. It, there's um, the activities can be done with a lot of people. And I feel like, do you th do you feel like that it has like evolved through you living, you know, there like uh, at the Funky Academy, like having to like, you know, I guess, is it like what's it like out there? I mean, is it like uh, I could I've never been out of the country, let alone. Uh, oh yeah I so know. i um uh, when i was depressed and as a teenager i was like especially i was like you know i think we all have our forms of escapism and, and books were definitely an escapism and then when i got my like first game console i was playing a lot of video games by myself and then i like my first computer in my room at like 14 or 15 so then i was playing a lot of online games Same, and, World and then days. oh my god bro I, I spent so much time playing world of warcraft and all those mmorpgs bro i tell uh, people world of warcraft was my first ever job oh yeah for sure <laughs> but i was looking forward to it every day man at school i was like fuck this let me let me go and play wow but um so of course i i found that like later in life that didn't fulfill me in a, a good way and uh I, w I started getting some like i was kind of a late bloomer and uh socially i started developing kind of like around 18 and 19 and then i got a sales job that like, made me like have to talk to people and i had a good teacher in that and i was able to get good at that and like kind of learn social ways maybe not in the best way in hindsight but i was becoming more socially confident a lesson, is a lesson whether it be a good lesson or a bad lesson. exactly but um and then i um yeah i started like going out to parties more and then like i just felt like what a connection with friends and as my friend group started growing and then you know like a lot of backpacking made me realize that like yeah like, this is a really fucking cliche quote but like happiness is only real when shared and although I've definitely felt some pretty powerful happiness being by myself, like being able to like talk to somebody about like the good old times or what the time that you climbed that yeah. mountain or like I saw you did some skydiving, the, the time that you guys did the super crazy skydive and Johnny did like five backflips and was able to land it, like whatever, you know, like I think 100%. those those are the moments that like 
I I can look back on on my life and like when I'm old or something and be like, wow, that was a life fully lived. And like we were not always able to um, do like those crazy adventures or, or any of those things. But it's still like, you know, like I personally have lived so long in community and like didn't have a job for years. I was just smoking weed on beaches and like playing chess and just living the hippie lifestyle, which is great. I, I recommend if you have the the privilege of being able to do so, like uh, do that for a while. But um, I realized that like I there's a limit that I have. I'm not like necessarily super extrovert of what I can do, like ha just hanging out with people. So for me, to, I had to have something to do and uh, chess was like a big one because everybody in the world plays chess and now i have uh like a place that i can store bigger stuff and like board games i think because of that became a thing that when i'm normally would tap out maybe watch a movie or like like play a game or whatever now i'm like feeling like, oh i'm still hanging out with people i'm still deepening these relationships but i i'm i'm doing something so i, I guess that just works for me right everybody can have those things uh, in yeah, their lives. Everybody's got their different flavor of life. Um, uh, you know, I like to, to uh, say, I, like, I'm an introverted extrovert. Um, Me too, bro. You know, I, For I sure. can do it. I can, yeah, I can absolutely do it. Everybody's like, you're always so extroverted, but like deep down inside, sometimes I just want to fucking, you know, not. <laughs> um, that's okay. Uh, no complaints. And I did want to like just track backtrack real quick to how you said um we're pack animals and we're all our own individuals and it's like dude i mean like if we're all our own unique people and we all work together and put all of our unique you know attributes uh together now you know it's obviously that that's so much better than just maxing out your own person your single you know what i mean yeah, no, hundred percent. I totally agree on that. And, and I, like, actually, looping back on the question you're asking, what it's like here, right, on Guatemala. So, um, I think this is what where we are based right now is, is a very unique place because we are uh, in like a crazy volcanic lake is right next door. It's super stunning, um, and then like it's r pretty rural, so it's really hard to reach. Like we don't have Amazon or nothing. Like our internet used to be shit until Elon Musk brought a starlink but when we want stuff like we need to ask people that are coming from the states to bring it that's kind of like the situation Damn. and but then we are um the town we live in is a there's a, a mayan community of the, the kakchikel people and they uh so they speak kakchikel they don't they're not native spanish speakers uh and, and that population in this town is about two thousand and uh people and then we have about like 200 extranjeros, mainly people from the United States, some people from, like, we have Irish people and French people and, like, Australians that uh, kind of, yeah, have, uh, have felt called to uh, make this place, uh, like, their base. So with it, and everybody's super cool. We have permaculture projects. We have herbalists. We have... Uh, like all kinds of healers there's an ecstatic dance temple right next door which can be amazing and can sometimes be a little bit like yo that i don't want to have like a boom sh boom sh every uh every sunday but um yeah like i think that of course comes with um challenges in, in many ways but i think i've also seen so much beauty you know it's like we are like for us like we can't change like the world right like uh, and fully integration of like westerners uh coming to a place like guatemala it's gonna take generations right and i i do am of the conviction that like i think over the long term this could be and is showing to be something beneficial for for everybody like for us we're able to like uh like supply people with work teach people how to grow mushrooms right we've taught like over a dozen local women how to grow oyster mushrooms from corn cobs which is an agricultural waste uh, which they can do at home because a lot of the, the there's a lot of single moms here because a lot of the men are tr try to go to the United States so they have to take care of the kids they want to work but like what kind of work they can they do at home growing mushrooms is one of those things uh, and then we supply them the spawn which they get on credit and if they sell oyster mushrooms they they pay, basically pay us back our costs uh, and and nothing else uh, and then we're teaching one of the sons of one of those ladies uh, how to like 
do lab stuff. So he's doing our like he's doing agar transfers and grain to grain with our flowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you know those things we've 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 seen, and and then also we we actually are like unique in that we we live together with uh, Sutu. He's Sutu Gil. He's like a Mayan rapper and artist and. Uh, uh, helps us with like we've taught him how to do video editing and he speaks some English and, and Spanish but like he's also really connected to like the mind cosmology right so that's their indigenous belief systems that are there's a big church influence here which is I don't think it's super healthy like there's a lot of alcoholism within people like the the Christians or like the the evangel the evangelists they're called here um and we're supporting like Sutu and Buho and some some other uh, people that really care about this Mayan cosmology and their like indigenous heritage to like share that wisdom not only with the people that come here but like also with the other Mayan neighbors and reconnecting them with their ancestral roots which kind of through like 500 years of colonization and the church and the, the inquisitions ha has been wiped away so it's like it's uh, you know it's and those things that don't change like that we can't expect that but it's it's nice to see that like you know from like a mayan person that never said at a mayan ceremony and then like talking to me about like not wait can that he can't wait to go like for to do another ceremony is is a is a beautiful progress to see but you know it's probably people watching this that are thinking dutch person european fucking get out of their colonists we get like a lot of hate from that and i'm always I open mean... to talk i can always open to to hear how we can do better um but yeah, that's that's it. That for me, it wasn't a I choice. Like, like we're here. Yeah, you're like, dude. Sorry, to, you know, a pretty bad, pretty bad podcast. And sometimes I just interrupt. But it, like, no, no, interrupting is great, great, man. That's that's a, so we're hanging out. We're shooting the shit. You interrupt each other. It's fine. Oh. I was going on a tangent. <laughs> dude, no, it's okay. I mean, you know, I was going with like, well, first off, I wanted to say it's you're basically living the land race life you know as far as like when we this is almost full circle back to like the land race cubes and like all that stuff right it's that you're uh you know you're closest to the land first and foremost uh whether it be you know spiritually you know psychedelic you know and then also uh you know or like just like you know where you're living right and then that goes into this next also while you can't stop people moving in you know to communities like that like it's just like you say it's going to happen um you're putting the most effort into learning about the local culture and you're giving back to the local culture in which is uh, that's providing for you as well uh so you know at the end of the day you're doing the best you can and you're giving the most respect to your local area uh so if anybody's got anything to say they can kick rocks <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's all we can do in the world, right? We can only do our best. And uh, we're doing our best. We're probably fucking up left and right. Uh, it's probably the same for, for most people listening. You can do your best. You still got to make mistakes. And that's that's also part of life. 100% part of life. I mean, you know, and it's like, this is something. I'm, I've been California sober for uh, three three months now. So, oh, congratulations, yeah. man. Thank you, man. It feels great. Uh, uh, but it's it's something I learned. I was actually having this conversation yesterday where, like, I feel like a lot of people, you can go through life not knowing shit. Uh, yeah. And it's crazy how long you can live your life not knowing things, but, like, kind of feeling like you understand it. Because, like, the lessons I've learned in this three months of, like, you know, uh, just, you know, sobriety have been uh, it, r ridiculous and it's like just kind of like stepping back and looking at myself you know it's like i guess being around psychedelics so much now i feel like i can look at myself through a third person perspective without having to like lose my mind on an eighth of mushrooms uh and i think yeah it's like with uh with that being said like you know all this stuff doesn't necessarily have to be a forever thing, right? Like with healing, you know, comes doing less, maybe taking less medicine or something like that. So it's, I see mushrooms as like a healer, right? So it's like, it's not something I'm going to have to need my whole entire life to like, you know, figure stuff out. 
It's just teaching me the ways to be able to do this uh, without being under the influence of a substance. Yeah, no, I think that's very true, right? And uh, I don't always agree with, like, of course, like um, uh, Adam Watts is a controversial figure if you go into his his life, but he, he said he said pretty beautifully, like when you got the message, hang up the phone, right? And I also see like a lot of escapism, and, and like still, you know, it can also be. Uh, and I think sometimes it's it's ostracized to talk about mushrooms like this, but it's still a drug, right? And I think so. I'm when I'm in conversation with Dennis McKenna, he still calls it drugs, right? Like one hundred percent. And it, it it is what it is, right? And like there's a lot of beautiful messages that I got from it, but I also know plenty of dickheads that eat tons of mushrooms and like they're still dicks, right? Like you have to do the work, right? Like the mushrooms can show you the mountain. Uh, but you have to still climb it yourself, right? And you cannot do that by eating more mushrooms. You just see the mountain again. And I think we, like, with conscious work and conscious use of uh, these technologies, like Darren LeBaron calls it, or like these these ancestors, or however you want, like these medicines that some people like to refer to, also means like you go through. I personally go through waves of like eating them and then like integrating the the visions, the messages they show me and then, then eating them again and then like seeing where I got and where I fucked up and all these things. But I think consistently eating them and thinking that's doing the work, I think it's probably not how like uh, the intention of the mushroom. The stereotypical stoner who smokes weed and just like, you know what I mean? smokes weed to just resolve all their problems but at the end of the day they're just fucking smoking weed and laying on the couch yeah you know you're not doing anything then uh i had this uh conversation with dennis from micropreneur podcast oh yeah, yeah i know dennis yeah, yeah. He's, he's a great guy he's so funny uh but you know he knows somebody we who had i think you know the person's done i don't like i don't remember exactly but we'll say like hundreds of ayahuasca trips and um but they still have all of these problems that uh are just like middle school life problems right it's not gonna uh, solve your problems that's for sure nothing's gonna solve your problems at the end of the day other than you uh like all of these things all of these things that all these things are just tools for us to like you know help us figure out our problems but instead of it being a phillips head screwdriver it's a little, little, little mushroom or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's a tool. It's a technology, right? And like, uh, just like any tool, it can be used to, uh, to help us. It can also be done. Like it can also be harmful. I think like these, these devices, these phones are also like the double edged sword, man. They're such an amazing tool. And then like, they're such like suckers of time and energy and concentration. And it's like, I feel like when people are like, oh, I think I have ADD. I'm like, I think everybody that has one of these phones has is become like is becoming like yeah, like people dude, in the nineties of ADD. It's just impossible not to. I think like this. This is like we're in like this era of like people who like are figuring out that we all got something. You know, we're all you know we all we all got our little quirks. You know, so to speak. Um, and it's just now. It, it seems to be more prevalent whereas like i feel like our parents were probably like you know um their parents were well, when our parents were growing up it was like they couldn't concentrate so they just like you know sent them to fucking boarding school or something it was like or like they were running around they were running around or couldn't concentrate and they were just like maybe that person's just hyper and like you know, that was hundred percent me. I was gosh darn a freaking little lightning bolt. I was bouncing off walls. I still do to this day. Uh, I got the most energy. But yeah, uh, you know, ADD. You know, all this stuff. Um, I mean, also you got like the it's this is a distraction. Like you know, while my whole entire life is on pretty much social media at this point. There's often times where I wish I could just like you know turn it off for a day. Um, but it's but you can it's almost. You, you can, can, but it's like you can't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like I, I do, I do. So you know, sometimes I just gotta turn off my phone. A lot of the times, I'll just let it die, and I'll be like, "Oops, my phone's dead. Can't charge it." Uh, you know, now I'm gonna enjoy the nice day at the beach. I, I think it's a good habit of like when I go on hikes, I don't bring my phone, or if you shoot, if you go to the beach, 
You have you probably have pictures of that beach on your phone anyway. Just leave the phone at home. Hundred percent. And I mean, a lot of the times, like at least you know, I feel like it's this is definitely gonna be a case for you because it's a case for me here in America. I don't get fucking service when I'm on a hike, anyways. Like you know, like there's no point. And I mean, I try to like open up the Bolli filter and like preload the the photos so I can like possibly look at a mushroom, but. Mm-hmm. Then they, there's so many lookalikes that it's like, you know, I don't even, that doesn't really even help. I really got to get into the description and do all the, the research and studies. I like to like put, say this in every episode, but don't eat mushrooms that you don't know. Like, please. <laughs> and that, yeah, not you, like, to the listeners who are listening. Oh, for sure. No, I don't, I think it's like, People get bold and like, I, I I follow a lot of these uh, identification groups and the things that people show up and then ask for, is this uh psilocybin? And I think it's I'm like, no, it's not even close. How can you not? Oh, and they're like, what? Yeah, it's just people want something and then they think like, oh, I found a mushroom growing from poop. That's that's it. But um, yeah, I think, I think it's just like, learn, we're, we're infants with technology, right? And we have to learn how to work with the these, this technology and how to have uh, proper boundaries. Like uh, I already noticed how much my like sleep changed when I just like charge this in a different room than my bedroom. I have it there overnight. Like that's such a small thing that I think most people can do. And then like you don't wake up and you don't immediately grab that thing because you have to wake walk to the next room. So like it's a it, it's a challenge, right? And I, I think we we are learning. That's it. To this day, I don't have a like I don't have a TV in my bedroom. Um, That's a super big one. Not having a screen in your any like I've not owned a TV in many uh, uh, many years, and like we have a projector, but then like the amount of work it takes. Okay, then we have to set it up, and then da, 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 and then it's like a whole endeavor. And like if I if there was a, just a screen there, and I could just like put like go Netflix on my phone and wipe something there. I probably have like watch way more shit because it's easy. So like the things that like I notice that are not good for me, I should, I, I try to make it more difficult to actually get done. And then things that like, I think should be good for me. Uh, like I, I make easy, right? Like I have my workout equipment. I don't store it away. It might look messy uh, in certain, in a certain place, but at least I know I could just like, okay, I have 30, 40 minutes, 50 Accessible. minutes. I'll just grab it and like I start working out, right? Instead of, okay, I have to set everything up. And then there's this, like, there's these barriers of entry that like should be more simple for the things that we, we want to do. And then and we only have so much energy in a freaking, you know, in, in our bodies for the day. And yeah, dude, you know, if it's accessible, you go, you know, crank out some quick little bicep curls or something place them down instead of having to neatly place everything away. And you know, that takes another hour out of your day. And we only got freaking 24 and like, you know, only 16 if you can't sleep. Right. I know. I, that's what I was about to say. You just read my mind, brother. Um, what are the, what are your, like, like what kind of, I like the corn cob cultivation. Um, you know, that's like, that's a cool, that's a cool idea for like the the locals using what would be waste to now you know create something, and then you know I guess even through that with the mycelium eating all that could then be composted and turned into like healthy soil. Uh, what the locals do is they feed it to their chickens because the chickens love eating mycelium, and then like everybody here has chickens because like it's like it's if. They just need to, basically, right? So you have. I mean, what's life without eggs? You know. Exactly, like eggs are phenomenal. I love eating eggs. I eat them almost every day. And like, if if you basically have an animal that exists, and you have like, even like a tiny space that you can just literally give your trash, and the animal will eat your trash and make food for you every day. It's it's such a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, man, 100%. I mean, I wish I could, like, uh, I, I still rent, but one that's the goal is to, you know, buy a house, and have, like, you know, a chicken and a cow, or, you uh, know, maybe do some, um, I don't know, like, who would have made some spirulina or something. I want to do some homestead stuff. It seems like, uh, 
this is like getting getting closer to whatever I'm, you know, eating or however I'm living, being closer to nature. I think, you know, I'm also in my 30s and my 30s are going to be big for like personal health and, um, you know, just personal growth, man. And yeah. I know, so it's like we can, I know we, you're, we can find you at the Fungi Academy, right? The, um, and your, you know, I guess your Instagram. Should we uh, throw up your personal Instagram? For sure. There too? So it's just Jasperius. You know, my find name. Jasper's personal Instagram. See him, you know, see all his strong, flexy photos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, every time I'm like, I should do more with my personal Instagram. I'm like, just not that person so much but I'll, I'll try but like again there's that relationship right like i'm like unless i feel really called or inspired to do like post i i just don't i just don't think about it so it's like i'm of course we're blessed with fungi academy having a big audience but i think if you want to get to know me more intricately like we have a i, I write a newsletter every monday it's called mushroom magic on monday and you can subscribe to it it's fungiacademy.com slash newsletter uh, I, I'll share what's that like for me something I've learned some cool music I share every week I share like uh, the newest re uh, research and studies and mycology and psychedelics that I find and then I share some of my take on it so um, it's the, the, the hottest news in the microsphere every week and uh, yeah lo I love writing that newsletter so that, that could be a way to get more connected so yeah, no, or you could just you know, watch the podcast and uh, just That's listen it. to us chit and chat. Uh, yeah, I'm actually like the, the I used to do these Instagram lives, but then I was like, "You're doing a, such a smarter approach because it's impossible to lo listen back to a cool conversation." I had some amazing guests from the whole like scene around, and I'm like, "It sucks to listen to it because like their phone and whatever." So. I'm, uh, we're we're rethinking that, and we might start a podcast. But we activated our YouTube yeah. channel again, so uh, we have a lot of stuff on YouTube now. I think it's pretty good, cool, so you can check that out. Yeah. And that's it, guys. Jeez Louise. But I mean, 100. percent I guess on this, on that, like to, to end it off, because uh, uh, I gotta freaking get to work and stuff. And while I'm <laughs> like, talking to you, I got, I got, you know, gotta do the things. Um, yeah. Uh, you should I just want to say, uh, uh, yeah, and I just want to say, Jason, I think you really got like something going with Funk Straight, man. Like, I think it's uh, there's a, a saying, right, that like uh, during the gold rush, almost nobody got uh, rich be with gold, but the people that were selling shovels and pickaxes, they're the ones that got rich, you know. So, like, I think yeah, the, the substrate and you, doing man. doing like high quality, like. Uh, substrate that like it just it just shows right like why would you go to somebody else if you can just see that like with genes and genetics that are so easy to find these days you can just ease it like you can just like grow tons of mushrooms you don't have to deal with like all the stuff that I used to have to deal with and you probably also had to deal with when you started growing is like figuring everything out like I think we're just living in the golden age that if you want to grow some mushrooms you can just buy everything and and like you've probably done so much R and R, you've like tried so many yeah. recipes to get to your your mix that I just see people crush out massive flushes with that. So that's amazing. Dude, thank you, like you, you know, thank you so much, man. Um, and it's just you know, I guess when I kind of thought of the idea of bug strain, it was like if it's not in my tub, it won't be in yours, right? And I stick to that to this day. That's a great I slogan. Don't... If it's not in my tub, it should be in yours. <laughs> You know? I love that. That's so, so good. That's it. Because I I know for a fact, me personally, I put the most care and effort into all of into my craft. And I I understand how people use, you know, these products and what they use them for. And, you know, it's like I would never want somebody to be using something that isn't necessarily um you know, I guess good for them, right? I wouldn't want them to be, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't want somebody to eat a contaminated fruit because I don't want to eat a contaminated fruit. So it's like for me to sell somebody shitty quality product would be disrespecting not only them, but also, you know, myself. And um, I think, you know, respect goes a long way. And intention, right? 
TLC, just like tender love and care and everything you do. Like, I think there's this, um, and I see it a lot in the, the quote unquote mushroom industry, which I think is a weird word. There's just so many people who are like just come in from the cannabis industry and they just have dollar signs in their eyes. And there's like, how can we produce as much as possible? We can take over the market, da, 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 da. we can put it, this sacrament in gummies, and then we can sell it to like uh, younger kids. And like, I'm just like, what? I, I, I see a lot of bad intents. Uh, and it's it's nice to know that like you know that there's people out there that put the intent in making good genetics, that put the intent in making good substrate, that put the intent of just like having people grow amazing uh, like food exactly and medicine. Putting the intent into teaching people how to do this, you know, uh, we're all we're all a community, man. We all see like the people who care about it see the people who care about it. Um, and I wanted to say one more thing on that note. This has never been about money, right? That, you know, becoming rich. The only thing I, you know, I want to become rich in is friendship with the community of people. Uh -huh. um, you know, obviously everybody has to pay their bills. Don't get me, you know, wrong. Um, and if I can, you know, work and do this, continue to pay my bills and continue to share, experience, you know, these experiences with people, that's what I want to do. But it'll never be about the dollar bills. That, and that's the, the, the key aspect, right? Like, I think if you work from the hearts and you do something that you love doing, the rest comes automatically, right? We do live in that world. But, like, I think it's also redefining what it means to be rich, right? Like, for a while, I was, like, a workaholic and I wasn't rich in my free time. Or I was not, like, rich in doing the, like, living in my highest expression. Or right? rich in, the like, the fact that I'm healthy and I can walk around and do the things I want to do physically right that that's that to me is richness and I think it's just a shame that we live in a world where like the only way to be successful is looked at how much zeros you have on the bank account and that's the thing that I'm least interested in right and it's it's interesting to see that like people come in with that and then like they, they had like a rich life they were growing mushrooms in Guatemala for like six months and they were getting like paid more than like they could ever spend in Guatemala and like a free food accommodation and then still is that sense that the scarcity mindset that like I've seen come up with like it's not enough and I, I that that saddens me right that the culture is so strong in this idea that we have to make so much money to to do all those things when reality is richness is like you said friendships connections experiences that's real richness to me I hear that, man. And I think that's a perfect way to end this, bro. Uh, you know, I want to thank you again. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been wonderful speaking to you. Uh, and you're just a, you're a beautiful person, brother. Thanks for inviting me, Jason. It was good to, to connect a little deeper this way. I had a blast talking to you. That hour flew by, you know, so. Oh, yeah. I Dude, and I'd love to have you on again. If you'd like to come on, you know, maybe get a little update on. Uh, oh you know, what's going on, and who knows, whenever you guys start a podcast, maybe I can hop on yours. Oh, for sure, man, 100%. Then you know what's going to happen? You got to get yourself a passport, and you got to get the fuck out of the United States. That's... No, I just <laughs> fucking got one. I just oh, got nice. one. Oh, nice. Fantastic. Well, calm down. Like, if you're in the, you're in the Southwest, right? Uh, southeast. Southeast, yep. Right in uh, Florida. Oh, yeah, if you're in Florida. Dude, flights to Guatemala can be, like, less than 100 bucks. Really? Straight from Miami. I had no idea. All right, all right. I'm coming. I'm coming down. And I'm coming down. Coming Come hang out, bro. But all thanks right, again. Man. You have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll talk soon. You too, man. Talk soon, Jason. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm. Much yeah. love. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening to today's Funcast episode with Jasper and I. If you like this podcast and would like to support me and my ventures, you can do so by purchasing products from me at fungstraight.com and or by subscribing to my Patreons at fungstraight and or at fungcast. If you'd like to have your company featured in a fungcast episode, you can do so by sponsoring a future episode. If this is something you're interested in, please email us at fungstraight at gmail.com and we'll get you set up and advertised at the end of an episode of our choosing. Also, don't forget to use the code FUNGSTRAIGHT at checkout at Fungi Academy for 15% off of all of your online courses. 
Thanks so much for watching and listening. And don't forget, mush love. Peace.